Okay, so we're starting on coordinate proofs, organizing coordinate proofs today, and then when we get to 9-6, we're going to be actually completing coordinate proofs. Okay, so in order to do that, you have to be able to figure out different distances and apply the distance formula, the midpoint formula, and the slope formula within the coordinate plane, and that's, that's what we're going to be practicing today. Okay, so as you're looking up those formulas, you may have to use the index. Index. They're not going to all be listed under book section 9.5. So they're all formulas we've used, but just a quick review of them. Okay, what's the midpoint formula? Nick? M equals parentheses x1 plus x2 over 2 on a y1, y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay, so it's a coordinate, right? So we're adding up our x values, dividing it by 2, adding up our y values, dividing it by 2. For example, if you had, it really is not zoomed for, I don't know if that helps or not. Okay, for example, if you had a, coor or a yeah, coordinate of 4, 3, and another coordinate of uh, 2, 7. Okay, so if those were our coordinates, applying the midpoint formula, this could be x1 and y1, our first x and y coordinate, and these are x2 and y2, our second x and y coordinates. Okay, we can plug those in and find the midpoint. So we're really just adding up our x's, 4 plus 2 is 6, divided by 2 is 3, and then 3 plus 7 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. So the midpoint of that would be 3, 5. If you were to connect those and find the distance between them, you would have 3, 5. Okay. I really don't know why that doesn't focus very well. All right. Slope formula. Yep. Um, slope equals mm -hmm. y2 minus y1 plus y2 minus y1. Good. Okay. And usually we abbreviate slope with the letter M and I used M over here, so uh, maybe we should rename that as midpoint or just mid or something like that. That way we're not confused. But there you go. Once again, we have to label our points if we're going to use those in that. All right, you're finding the difference between the points here. So that would be three and seven. So if we're doing y two minus y one, it's seven minus three. If we're using that example and 2 minus 4. Notice I use the first y, or the y2 point here so that means I have to use that x2 first because I'm subtracting so that gives me 4 over negative 2 or a slope of negative 2 Okay, if I'm using that example. Distance formula. Lee? job. Okay, so we have our our distance formula. Okay, and we talked about that earlier in the year being really similar to the Pythagorean theorem. Right, this would be a squared, this would be b squared, and this is c squared. It's just we've moved the square over to get a square root. Alright, we're not going to go through that again, but if we were plugging those points in, notice we take our x2 and x1, kind of like we did here. Okay, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So you have negative 2 squared. So we'll put our square root in. And our y's, we have uh, y2 minus y1, same thing we had here, which is 4 squared. So we end up with 4 plus 16, square root of that to give us root 20, which we take this and simplify to 2 root 5. Good. Okay. All right, so all examples there, right? Okay, make sure you have these formulas down. I will tell you that sometime this week, one of the days this week, we're going to have a pop quiz. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right? Be ready for that. Okay. This week, one of the days this week. Okay, let's move on. Next page.
Page 480, giving the coordinates for points W and Z without using any new variables. Okay, so we want to find the coordinates. <clears throat> All right. Hey, this is what we're doing in, in coordinate geometry. We have, or in coordinate proofs, we're, we're using shapes in the coordinate plane. Okay? And so, when I'm looking at this at W and Z, I want you to work with your neighbor right now to figure out what these coordinates are for that point and that point. Okay? After you have to use, can't use any new variables that aren't on that coordinate right now. You get about one minute to talk about it. So what do you think? W and Z. Man, Jody, what do you got? Uh, I said W equals 0, comma, H, and Z. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. 0, comma, H. Okay, now where'd you get the 0 from? Um, because it's on the y-axis, which is 0 for the y, or for x. Okay, so x equals 0 right here. Everyone agree? Mm -hmm. How many seconds that? We're good. Okay, and then where'd you get the H? This point. Yeah, the second one is eight. Good, yeah. And so this this y value, this is the y value. So if we follow that over, it hits the same point, so we have h. Good. Nick, what'd you get for z? Uh, b comma zero. B comma zero. Same logic? Yeah. Yep. Okay, on the y axis you're at zero. Okay, and this is your x coordinate for this point, and so if we follow that name down, it's the same x coordinate. So it's right here at b. Okay, now how many got those? Okay, any questions on them? They're kind of different, they're really different ones. Okay, let's do the same thing on number two. Give that a shot. Um, letter W this time. Notice, get you, here, notice that to get to W, we have to leave X, and we've got to go over this far, right? How many are with me? We got to go over that far, correct? Now, it would be great if we knew what the x coordinate of z was, right? Because that would be the same distance as w. But we don't. Do we? No. Andrew? Um, since the square, all the sides are equal. Oh, all the sides are equal. So that means this length is equal to this length. What's this length? A. A. It's a length of a. We know that because this coordinate is at 0 on x, which we know this is x equals 0, x equals 1, and so on, okay? This is x equals 0, this is y equals a. So this length from here to here has a length of a. That means this has to also have a length of a. That means this coordinate on the x-axis is a, which means this is a right there, a comma 0, yeah, right? Because we haven't changed on the y-axis. So that means w is also at a and A, right? It's A this way and A this way. Sound like our friends up north there. A, okay? A, A. Yes? Okay, how many got A, A? How about A, zero? All right. Let's try number three. Three's a bit different. Okay. How far have we traveled from here? To here. Have we traveled half? I hear half a B and B. How many say it's B? B. Traveled B. How many say we travel half B? Some of you aren't saying anything or you're worried. Okay? Got to say something. Okay? We are traveling a length of B. We know that because. Not, I wasn't, you know. Because okay. we know it because this x value is b on both of these. That means we had to travel to all the way out to that distance. If this if this value was like I don't know, give me a number six. six. If this if this value was six, right? If it was six, then we'd be traveling out to how far here? Six, right? That's the x coordinate. But it's not 6, it's b, so that means we've traveled this far out. And this is a square again, which means, assuming this is the center, which we're going to say it is, okay, then this length also has to be a length of 
B. So this was a length of B. This has to be a length of B. If I go this way, B units, where am I at? I'm now at negative B. Okay? This length isn't negative B. You can't have a negative length. It's a length of B, but when you go this way on a coordinate plane, B units, we're at negative B. Just like if we went this way three units, we'd be at negative three. You guys with me? Okay, so W, the X coordinate of W is negative B. Okay? Now, same thing here. If we go if we go up this far, we reach this point, which is at B. That means we went up B units. Okay, if we go up B units, that makes this B, which makes this also B. And if we went B that way, we have to go B this way. When I go B units down from the origin, I'm at negative B, which makes this now the coordinate negative B, negative B. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be cool. All right. Okay, any questions on it? How many thinks it's weird? Kind of weird? A lot different. Okay, we can do it though. All right, let's go on to number seven. It says find the coordinates of the midpoint of WZ. Coordinates of the midpoint of WZ in exercise one. So let's focus in there. So, WZ, that's like not even on here. Yeah, we have to draw in the line, right? It's total weird. It's neater if I use a straight edge, then it doesn't look so weirded. Alright. Still looks a little weird. I gotta color it. There we go. Looks a little better. Alright, anyway, we're looking at this. Use your midpoint formula. Give it a go. Here we go, midpoint formula. We have to find the midpoint we use. We just add our points up, divide by two. So if you call it y, it doesn't matter if you call it one or two. All right, so in that case, if I'm doing that, w, Okay, this would be our x1, x or y1. This would be our x2 and y2. So we're adding b plus 0 to get b over 2. And we're adding 0 plus h to get h over 2. Okay, questions on that? That's it. That's our midpoint. That means if we go to B over 2, which halfway from here to here, here to B is right here, and we go to H over 2, halfway from here to H, it's right there, those two points would give us our midpoint of that line. That's the coordinate of the midpoint. Okay? Hey, it now says find WZ. It says find the coordinates of the midpoint of WZ. But then it says, and find WZ. What's that mean? Yeah, it means finding the distance. Okay, so we've got to find the length of WZ. So now we find the midpoint, let's find the length. Use your distance formula to find that length. I know that was a bit weird. Hey, it may help some of you out as I was walking around. I didn't see a lot of you listing the coordinates of W. So it might help for you just to say, hey, W is at 0 H and Z is at B0. So when you're substituting in, it makes it a little easier.
How many got that equals the root of b squared plus h squared? Now, here's the question. Can I, since I'm taking the square root of b squared and plus h squared, can I just cancel the squares and just get b plus h? Yeah, you guys, there are implied parentheses in here. So you have to do what's inside there first. Now, if you, there will be times in math where you'll start questioning. You'll be like, can I do that? And you may not have a teacher sitting here telling you you can. And you, you know, just test it. Like, give me a perfect square. So this is make-believe land now, right? These don't apply to this problem. But let's say we have, let's say we have 25. And another perfect square. Nine? All right. Okay. So 25 plus 9 is? 34. We know the square root of 34 is about 5 point some 5.8 or so, right? It's in between 5 and 6, right? Yeah. Everyone agree? Okay. That's if we go one way. If we go the other way and we say, well, we're just going to cancel. We're going to say we're going to take the that and make that 5. We're going to make this one 3 and 5 plus 3 is 8. We know the square root of 34 is not 8. Okay, so we know we can add here. We can't just take the roots like that. Okay, that does not work. So this has to stay as is. All right. Hey, let's try number eight. I want you to find the midpoint of WZ and the distance of WZ for number eight. It, once again, it probably help you to list what those coordinates are first. This one's a little easier because you got that vertical line, right? So the midpoint, you can even just kind of look at it and say the midpoint. It's halfway between 0 and A, which is? Yeah, it's A over 2. The midpoint is A over 2 and oops, A over 2 and A, right? Now, if, you, if you're calculating that, so I just use the graph to figure that. But if I'm actually calculating that point, so again, you've got to do your x2, x1, o2. So if we go x1, y1, x2, y2, doesn't matter which one you call ones and twos as long as they're together. Okay, we've got a plus a over 2 and 0 plus a over 2. So this one gives us 2a over 2, which is just the same thing as a. And this one gives us a over 2. Okay. So we get a over 2, or we get a and a over 2. What did I do wrong? Up here. Andrew? Uh, you switched the two coordinates, which would have been a, comma, a over 2. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's such a rookie mistake. My bad. OK, yeah, we're at x equals a, and the y value so rather than going up a length of A, we're going only halfway up, which is A over 2. My bad. How many knew I did that when I did it? Thanks for telling me. Sadness. All right. You're confused? No, you screwed up. Oh. Uh, man. It's okay to say, hey, you're wrong. It happens once in a while. All right. Distance. What's the distance from here to here? A. Yeah, it's A. Right? You're going from here to there. Now, how many did the distance formula? How many got A? 
It's okay sometimes to just do it the easy way. Look, you're going a straight or a vertical line, not just a straight line, because here you're doing a straight line as well, but it's diagonal. Vertical line, distance is easy. Horizontal, distance is easy. Just A. Woohoo! So the distance equals A. All right, everyone rate themselves one to five. Five, you get it? Right now, where we're at? One, you're struggling. Don't look at other people's ratings. You rate what you get. Okay? All right. Moving on. Number three, which is number nine as well. Exercise three, we're going from W to Z. Now, let's see if we can figure that out without using the formulas. How about using the pictures this time? Okay? Give you 30 seconds. Actually, give you one minute to figure midpoint and distance on those. Work with your groupies. Okay, let me get your attention back up here. So, from here to here, how far have we traveled this whole length? 2 B. 2 B. I mean, remember we went here, up to there, that's B. This is B, so that's 2 B. So the distance is half a 2 B, or, or excuse me, not the distance, the midpoint is half a 2 B, right? Just B, B, okay? So, if we're going, if we're looking at the y value, are we, where are we at on the y axis at this point? We're at zero, okay? So our midpoint for the y is zero, and then for the x, we are at? We're at negative b. Negative b zero, okay? The whole distance is? 2b. Or not 2b. It's not a question. It's 2. Okay? Distance, if you don't want to confuse yourself with all the letters, distance equals 2. Okay. We got it? Okay. Any questions? Moving on to the two for stuff. Okay? Number four, we've trained our minds. Now we get to look at the amazingly cool stuff. So once again, we're finding the coordinates of WZ without using any new variables. Once you give number four a shot, okay, start with that one. Hey W, let's start with W. We go from here on the x-axis, we're at what point right here? Zero. zero. And so the x-coordinate for W is zero. Okay. The y coordinate, however, we have to go all the way up here this way, right? Our y's move like this. So at this point, we are at, at B. Okay? Now, how many got B there? That'd be cool. All right. How about Z? Let's see. Well, Z on the x axis, are we at zero still? No, X is run this way, right? So we're right here on the X axis, which means we somehow need to know how far this distance is from here to there. What is that distance? Yeah. How do you know? This one. This one. Okay. Okay. And the other one below it is C. Okay. So if I, tr if I travel from here to here, I've traveled C. Everyone agree with that? Yeah. Okay. And so now what do I do, JJ? You have to, it says subtract A. So, so I go back that way, A. So if I travel C units, and then I go back A units. So this length, as JJ's pointed out, is A, which means this length is also. A because these little triangles are congruent, right? They're, they're the same. So this is a length of A. How many got that? Nice work. What's this? Zero. On the Y axis, we're at zero. Very good? Okay. Hey, distance and midpoint, I'm going to let you guys work those out. I think you're, you're pretty decent on those right now. Okay? All right. Can anyone do the midpoint in their head right there? 
Midpoint, you add the x's and divide by 2. Eli, if I add the x's up and divide by 2, what do I get? What's a plus 0? Don't tell them. Yeah? What do you got? Huh? No? What's a plus 0? A divided by 2? Mm -hmm. A over 2. Good. What's B plus 0? Because you're sleeping. B plus 0 is? B divided by 2? B over 2. There's the midpoint. Well done. Okay? Oh, okay. Look like you were. You're a good actor. All right. Number five, a rhombus. I want you to find point W and point Z. Point W and point Z. We have cat-like speed. So from here to here, how far have we traveled on X? Traveled a length of R because the same distance is here, right? It's a rhombus. These triangles, these little triangles in the middle are all congruent. So this is congruent to that. Okay, so that's a length of R, which makes this what point? Yeah, if we go back r units, we're at negative r. Negative r, zero. How about z? Well, this length is the same as this one. How far did we go from here to here? T. t. And here to here? T. t, which brings us to? Negative t. If we go down t units, we're at negative t, zero. <coughs> oh, oh, it's almost like I meant to do that. Okay, how about zero, negative t? Well done. Okay. Okay, and negative r plus zero? Everyone? Negative r divided by two? Negative r over two. That's the x coordinate to the midpoint. Zero plus negative t is? Negative t over two. Good. So we can plug all that into the formula. Okay, that's what we get out for the midpoint. Questions? How many are getting better at it? Okay, let's try number six. We're going to do this one together. So this point and this point. Let's do, which one's the easier point to deal with there? Kind of looks like Z, right? Because we know one of the coordinates right away. Which coordinate do we know? We know zero, four, that's our x coordinate, right? We're on the x axis, or the y axis, which is 0 for x. How far did we go up? C. Good, we went up c units. Okay. So w is at the same level, they're on the same floor together, right? It's like a, a floor of a building, the same floor, so that means this is letter c as well. How far did we move over? Okay, we had to go over B units, right? Because that's the same as this. And that's this length right here, which is a coordinate of B. So this is also going over B, which puts us at? If we go backwards B, we're at negative B. Okay? So midpoint's a little tougher here, right? Negative B plus zero is? Negative B, negative B divided by two? Negative B over two. Okay. And C plus C is? 2C divided by 2. C. C. I see. All right. Hey, we did not apply the distance formula there, but we're not going to go into that right now. I think we're okay on it. I want us to take a look at our assignment, which I'm about to hand out to you. We're going to be doing example two together. So here, if you go with it. All right. Find the slope of each segment. Number 11 is PI. Okay, so we're going from here to here, slope, what's the slope of that line? Zero. And it's zero, okay, slope is zero, okay, it's a flat line. Now we could actually apply the slope formula if we wanted, right? Okay, we're going to now find the slope of this line, IK. 
All right. So applying the slope formula, remember the slope formula is y. What is it? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Or in other words, subtract your two Y values. That gives you your top. Subtract your two X's. That gives you the bottom. Okay? There we go. That's all right. That would disturb me if Jacob couldn't register because then he wouldn't be able to be in my class next year. I would frown on it, Jacob. All right. Hey, how we doing on it? Get X. How many are using this point as X1, Y1? How many are using this one as X1, Y1? Does it matter? No. Doesn't matter. I'm going to use this point as my ones. I'm not playing favorites, I'm just... I just think it's easier to subtract zero. Right, so I get A minus zero and 3B minus zero equals A over 3B. Dude, that's the slope. Have to be three B over A? No, I mean oh. like if you did the Y two. Oh. Yeah, I did. I you know what I put the yeah, I guess the way I wrote it, I should make these the ones. And these the twos. Right? That's a good point. Hey, but really it doesn't matter. How many of you did it the other way? So in that case you get negative A over negative three B, right? Which gives you when you yeah, when you simplify it, then that's positive A over positive 3B. So it doesn't matter which one you call 1 and 2. It just matters that the 1s are together and the 2s are together. That should be kind of a review from earlier this year and a review from algebra if you recall doing that. Let's find the slope of KE. Okay, what is it? Zero. It's a flat line, man. Don't go through all that work. You could get zero by doing the formula, but note it's a flat line. What if the line's straight up and down? What do we call that? Undefined, Undefined slope. Okay? Let's find the slope of PE. PE. Gracie, I'll put them in right this time. For those that you love this formula, there's four slots you fill out. It's the y2, y1, x2, x1. Okay, A over B. Now, I haven't actually done it, so if I put it in, I'll do it really quick. I get 0, and i got to do it right. And negative B, 0. Negative A over negative B is what I got, which is A over B. All right, there if we go. Your assignment is the example side. Okay? Woo! I know it's exciting.